Hello, my name is Jonathan Magnusson and I will be presenting a second look at DNS QName minimization. So first of all, what is QName minimization? So a resolver is performing a query on behalf of its client and it is sending the full query name to the different name servers in DNS. So we'll send www.example.com to all of root name server, the TLD name server and the authoritative name server for example.com. The idea of QName minimization, hereafter referred to as QMin, is to minimize the amount of data that is leaked in the DNS name servers. So instead of sending www.example.com, the resolver will instead only send the label .com to the root name server, get the referral to the TLD name server for .com, then append an extra label to create example.com and send that query to the top level domain name server. It will get the referral to the authoritative name server for example.com and continue adding labels until it sends the fully qualified domain name to the authoritative name server and get the resource record requested. So in 2019, the Reset et al. Uh, came up with a method of detecting if a resolver is minimizing queries from the client side. So on the left, we have a client. In the middle, we have two different resolvers, one that is not minimizing and one that is minimizing. And on the right, we have configured name servers under our control. So in the first case, the client will send a query a.b.example.com for a txt record to the not minimizing uh, resolver. Uh, then the resolver will send the full query name, so a.b.example.com to our name server and get a txt record which contains no. And then the client will know that this resolver is not minimizing any queries. In the second case, uh, the same query is sent to a minimizing resolver, which will iteratively add labels throughout the querying process. And when it gets to b.example.com, it will reach our name server one and get a referral to our second name server. Then the resolver will append an extra label to create a.b.example.com and eventually get the txt record from our second name server containing hooray. And the client will know that this resolver is minimizing its queries. So we build upon the methodologies of the Vries et al. And we uh, perform some active measurements. So in more detail, we do an extended analysis of RIPE Atlas probe measurements that has been going on since the first study. Uh, we also query open resolvers. And instead of querying one query, uh, performing one query per resolver, we are doing 100 queries. And we're also doing it from three different geographical locations. Uh, for passive measurements, we validate these open resolvers at the top level domain. And instead of having only two categories, minimizing or not, we are introducing a third category called conflicting. Because we are doing 100 queries instead of one, we noticed that a subset of the resolvers are sometimes responding with hooray and sometimes responding with no. And therefore, we call these resolvers conflicting. We also looked at queries at the name servers over time, uh, more specifically root, uh, kroot and the .nl top level domain. So we uh, classify a query as minimized at root if it only contains one label. And we classify a query as minimized at the top level domain if it has two or less labels. What we are extending the previous methodologies is to um, filter out invalid labels. So this would be non-existing TLDs at root and response code zero at the TLD. We also perform controlled experiments as in the previous study where we measure performance and response quality of open source resolvers. Uh, in the previous study, they compared unbound, bind and the not resolver. And we are including PowerDNS, which did not have Qmin implemented at the previous study, at the time of the previous study. So looking at the results of the RIPE Atlas probes, we can see here over time the different categories of resolvers. So we see that we have query name uh, or minimizing resolvers in green. We have not minimizing resolvers in orange and gray are resolvers that are responding to other queries, but not our QMIN measurements. Uh, 
So the reason why there is an increase in gray resolvers between 2020 and 2022 is uh, because of a bug in the churning system of newly added probes that were not performing our Qmin measurements. But together with NLNetLab, we contacted RIPE, and this bug was fixed in uh, April of 2022, where you can see the values going up to where they should have been. Uh, looking at the adoption rate of um, minimizing resolvers, we can see that there is a rapid increase of resolvers in late 2019, and then that it levels out in tw between 2020 and 2022. We can also see that while uh, before this bug was fixed, we are seeing a decrease in non-minimizing resolvers, which means that the uh, relative adoption of uh, minimizing resolvers is actually going up, even though it looks like it is leveling out. But the rapid adoption in late 2019 and early 2020 uh, prompted a deeper dive into the characteristics of the resolvers used by these probes. So we looked at the ASM of these resolvers, and we found out that in the late 2019, a lot of the resolvers that were minimizing came from Google's ASM. We can also see here in orange, we see Cloudflare, which was pointed out in the previous study, since you can see the adoption in the uh, middle of 2018 and during 2019. Looking at the results of our active measurements on open resolvers, we performed uh, measurements from three different geographical locations, North Virginia, Tokyo, and Frankfurt. We had a list of 6 million IPv4 addresses where the machine was responding on port 53 UDP, and we sent 100 queries for each resolver. Out of these, 70% responded and did not time out. And out of those that did not time out, we got 20% responding with no error. This means that the remaining 80% were responding with uh, refused, not authorized, server fail, and so on. And the majority of the, those 80% are refused. Out of those that were responding with no error, we looked at correct replies, which would be a TXT record with either hooray or no, and that was around 80% of those responding with no error. And then looking at the correct replies, we see the share of hoorays, which in our measurements were 16.4%, which is a tenfold increase since the previous study. When looking at the open resolvers, we are also querying the Google public DNS. And we found an interesting behavior where it consistently responds differently uh, depending on which domain we're using. So all of these three domains uh, are using the same methodology of detecting cumin, but it's consistently responding with no for two of them and responding with hooray for one of them. We reached out together with NLNet Labs to the Google public DNS team, and they said that they are minimizing on the root level and the top level domain, but after that, they're sending the full query. And since their resolvers were showing up as not minimizing, since we are measuring cumin at a higher or lower level of the DNS, then they wanted to do an exception for that domain so they would show up as hooray in our measurements. Looking at the results from the passive measurements, we can see here that we have the TLD of .nl in the blue and orange lines, and we have the data from the K root with the blue crosses and the yellow diamonds. So we can see that we have this filtering effect where when we are filtering out for only existing domain names, the, there is a decrease at the top level domain from around 58% to 47% in 2021, but it's a lot more significant at the root, uh, where in the same year where we're filtering, it went down from 28% to 2.5. So this shows that there is a lot of single labels at the root, which are not corresponding to any existing top level domain. So there's a lot of junk going into the root servers. But we can still see that there is an increase on the uh, adoption the, or at the, there is an increase of minimized queries, both at the TLD uh, and albeit slow, it is still an, it's an is a positive adoption rate uh, at the root level. 
We also perform control experiments to measure the performance and the response quality on four different open source resolvers. So these were Unbound, Bind, Not Resolver, and Power DNS. And these have different modes when running. So we, for, for example, have Off, which is no minimization at all, Strict, which is only doing minimization and nothing else, and Relaxed, which is doing minimization until you run into some kind of error or problem, and then you fall back to using the normal method. So here you can see that Unbound and Bind support all three modes. Not Resolver is only running in relaxed mode, and PowerDNS can either be turned off or turned on in relaxed mode. So we are seeing a trend where the number of packets is going up since the previous study, except for not resolver. And we also have the trend of error rate going down, and this is regardless of mode. So it seems to be indicating some change in the DNS ecosystem. In our study, we also discussed the trade-offs between privacy and performance in regards to minimizing queries. So looking at the root and the TLD name servers, they are seeing a lot of non-cached queries. So this makes sense to be doing some kind of minimization of the data that is uh, observable. Uh, we found a public suffix list with effective TLDs. So this would be uh, both single and multi-label TLDs. And the idea or the, uh, what we propose is to use this list as a heuristic for uh, when to stop minimizing queries. So for example, if we have a PSL plus one, we would be minimizing up until example.com, example.co.uk, and so on, depending on what is the effective TLD. So in summary, we built upon and extended the me methods of the Vries et al. And we were observing changes over time in the DNS resolver ecosystem. So what we can uh, find is that there is a positive trend in cumin adoption. And we did this with both active and passive measurements using different methods and viewpoints. We also discussed the trade-offs between privacy and performance. And we suggest using a public suffix list to set this as a heuristic of when to stop minimizing.